showing love to today, son. I'm showing love to the uh, Citizen Grand Touring with the oversized crown protector, 44 millimeters. I'm showing love to this watch today. But uh, here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about uh, success. I want to talk about how uh, here I am. I'm in my 50s, and I'm still kind of like a little kid in the sense that I'm a student of people that I see as being successful. If someone is successful, I want to model my life after that person. And by successful, I you know, you got to check every box. I mean, the person has to be successful in obtaining his goals, but he also has to be uh, cool under pressure. He has to have a certain composure. He has to have discipline. I have to detect a, a moral center, an honesty, an integrity. I need to uh, see a, a sense of perspective, an ability to see not just the trees, but the, the bigger picture, the forest. And uh, I, I've met a man uh, last night. Uh, his name's Ted. Uh, he works at uh, SpaceX. He's a big shot there. He's in charge of all the food. He's the top chef there. He's a great guy. Now, I've actually known him for about three or four years, but I've never really sat down and talked to him until last night. Uh, now, here's what happened. Uh, my daughters uh, go to school with his daughters, and uh, I work with uh, Ted's wife. We do valet, and you've heard me talk about valet. And I know Ted's a watch guy because I see him... Uh, pull up to the school with his daughters and I, he's always wearing a tag or a Breitling or a Seiko or something. So I know he's a watch guy. Talked to him a little bit. I know he's a power lifter. I know that in high school he was a national powerlifting champion. He uh, squatted over 800 pounds. He benched over 500. And uh, I just really never got to talk to the guy. I mean, he's really busy working at SpaceX and uh, he rides his bicycle 200 miles a week now. He's, he's about my age, maybe a year younger than I am. And he, he maintains a body weight of about 175 pounds. Like me, he used to weigh 240. He lost it about six years ago. He's kept it off for the last three years, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So uh, last night after dinner, my daughters and I went to hit Ted's house because his daughters, who performed in the Nutcracker Suite, were having an after performance party. So I took my daughters to the after performance, kind of like a Christmas party, post nutcracker performance type of party. And my girls were playing upstairs. And finally, I got to talk to Ted. And I've always kind of admired him, but I really, really didn't get to know him. And, and uh, he knows that I don't like weighing 240. He knows I love food. And uh, he knows I would love to get down to 220, 200, something like that. I mean, even 220, I look skinny at 220. That's that's how big my frame is. Uh, anyways, uh, so we were talking about food, and he is so disciplined. I mean, um, he bought himself a uh, bariatric digital scale. He, he uh, It's connected to his smartphone. He's showing me analytics on his phone, how his weight went down to 175. He eats six small meals a day, and he told me, one of the, a good piece of advice is to not look at a meal as a meal, but look at every eating uh, opportunity as topping off. You're just topping off and uh, just topping off just enough, like 300 calories or so to make it to your next snack. He pretty much eats paleo. He cheats a little bit on the weekends uh, when he has breakfast with his family and such. Uh, but he, he told me he's very consistent on the weekdays. And, uh, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. He weighs 175 pounds. Uh, he's my age. He's like me. He, he weighed 240 like me. He was a bulked up weightlifter. I was an Olympic weightlifter. He was a power lifter. And he's kept his weight off. He's very disciplined. He said something fascinating to me, uh, very successful. He said, uh, you know, the, the gratification I get from weighing 175 pounds and from having discipline, it, I've learned that it's greater than the gratification of just eating whatever I want, you know, <laughs> going going to Hogtown, man. And uh, he showed me all of the supplements in the closet. And because he's the top chef at SpaceX, he has access to pretty much any food he wants. But he sticks to uh, to paleo. I asked him, "Don't you ever want to eat a, a giant plate of pad thai?" And he goes, "Yeah, but I want to fall asleep for like five hours, take a five hour nap as I digest the pad thai." So uh, we talked about. Uh, food, dieting, 
And then uh, we walked into the living room. Uh, the Raiders were playing the Cowboys. The volume was on almost completely off. So uh, we switched the conversation to uh, watches. You know, as you know, I'm into watches. Uh, and uh, this was interesting. The, the watch discussion was interesting because here I am. I'm talking to someone who I think is successful, not just in terms of someone who's achieved his goals in life, but I like his attitude. I like the way, you know, he's in this house with all this party stuff going on. There's a dog barking. I like the way he keeps his cool. I admire that. And so I'm talking to Ted about watches. And I, one of the questions I asked him, because a source of anxiety for me in watches is owning a Swiss watch. And uh, one of the things about owning a Swiss watch that drives me crazy is I don't know what it would cost to maintain. I have a feeling it would be like having a, a high-performance uh, sports car. And sure enough, Ted said to me, you know, having a Swiss watch, and I got many. I got a couple of Rolexes. I got a Breitling. I got some tags. You know, it's like having a German sports car. And just look at, you know, you're going to be paying that. And he said it very calmly. Like, he's resigned to it. And he even told me he recently spent 1200 bucks on a Rolex that just stopped working. Couldn't get it to tick at all. Had to send in. It was 1200 bucks. It broke again. And uh, he said, luckily, they, they did it for free. I guess it was under some kind of repair warranty. And then uh, I asked him, well, how many watches do you have, Ted? And he said, I got about 30. And then he goes, and that blows my mind because... You know, I've had this mindset for the last couple of years that more watches is hell. More watches is anxiety. More watches is a reflection of shame and of addiction and of something to be ashamed of. It's naughty. And here he is telling me, I got 30 watches. And uh, honestly, he says to me, I only wear about five of them regularly. The other 25 just sit in a box. And I said to him, doesn't that drive you crazy? You got 25 watches you never wear? He goes, no, I like them. I like to own them. I'm a collector. I just like having them. And you know what was amazing when he said that? Number one, the peace of mind that he had when he said that. Number two, I think that's kind of like I am. I, I like having certain watches that I don't necessarily wear hardly ever at all. I just like having them. They look amazing. And I always thought there was something naughty about that that's wasteful. There's some kind of puritanical streak in me that uh, condemns myself. I'm, I'm so hard on myself on my watch collection. And here's a watch collector, healthy, he having a healthy talk. Well, healthy, and it, it makes sense because he's healthy in other areas of his life. He keeps cool uh, when things are crazy. He uh, shows discipline when it comes to his eating. He shows discipline when it comes to his work and his exercise. So it makes sense that he's healthy minded with his watches. So he, he doesn't mind having 30 watches, he doesn't mind paying maintenance on, doesn't mind that he doesn't wear some of them, and he says, I just gave a watch to my son as a uh, graduation present when he graduated from high school. I, I'm, he's liking it. I don't remember what kind of watch it was. It might have been an old tag or something. And then he says, and the thing about watches, he says, you can always sell them. Good barter. People always want, you know, he, what do you say? People always want uh, watches, gold, and guns. And uh, he was very... Uh, very uh, calm about the whole thing. And it made me think, you know, um, I approach watches from such a narrow paradigm. I've all, for me, having a large collection of watches, which I've had, I've had as many as 55, it was like being in purgatory and getting into this nice small collection of three, four, five, was like going into watch collector's uh, paradise, watch collector's nirvana. And here's someone, he's just relaxed with having 30. It's not a big deal to him. Could I be like him? Could I be healthy? I don't know. I mean, I'm not him. I'm not hardwired like him. I'm probably more neurotic than he is. I probably have a different history than he does. But uh, I find that it's refreshing to see that you don't have to be like me with your watch collection. There's another way of being a watch obsessive. There's a good way of doing it. There's a relaxed way. There's a non-judgmental way of doing it. There's a way of it just being a pleasurable hobby. And Ted opened the door to that. He also opened the door to uh, me uh, cutting my calories down. See how that works, tipping things off. So I wanted to get that off my chest. I want to talk about success. I want to talk about enjoying your watch hobby. It is a holiday. I want to say something positive. I want to do enjoy this day. And so that's it, my ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, I am out.